Thank you, Father. It's difficult to talk when you're engaged in the realm. And, you know, often in church history, they wouldn't be able to speak and they'd call it a ligature, which came from the word, the binding of the ligaments. So often the, the priests and the saints, if they were immobilized, they'd call it a ligature. So these states have been around for a long period of time where you are so enraptured in God that you have an inability to perform external acts. That's the definition of a ligature. Um, when I first started engaging in the mystic realm, I found it very hard to mobilize and to talk because I would be experiencing this realm and I would experience the ligature quite often. But over time, I've learned to host my body in my spirit and energize my body to be able to function whilst I'm in the realm. So today, I just hope that this is not too far out to you. I want to talk about multi-locationality. And the reason I've got these pictures behind me, this is a, an artist's rendition of quantum entanglement between two particles. And I'll just move that these two particles seem separate, but they're actually joined. And this is one of the strange things that they've discovered in quantum physics is that if two particles are entangled, they will act like one particle, no matter where they are in the universe. They've tried this with even satellites in space. And if they spin one particle, the other one will spin. If they join another particle, this one will join another particle. And really, this is a, is a graphic that explains what has happened to you in Yeshua. You've been entangled into him, and he's been entangled into you. And wherever he is, you can be too. This is the mystery of the gospel. Scripture says it like this. It says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So the mystics and saints of old described it like this. They said that you were like a glass of water that was poured into the ocean of the divine and you became permanently intermingled in the divine essence. So, if we start to understand this is the gospel, that the gospel isn't about going to heaven when you die. The gospel is a merger with the divine nature, that we have been seeded with his nature. We have his seed in us. And even in nature, and I hope this won't embarrass anyone saying this, but when, when a, a couple make love, their DNA quantumly entangles. And some of the DNA is absorbed into each other and forms energetic bonds. We call them soul ties. But the reality is, this is what's happened to you and Yeshua. You have been quantumly entangled into him. And this was the ancient faith, going back to Athanasius in the first century, where they said the Trinity, the good news of the gospel, is that the Trinity have included us into their life. That Paul put it like this, one died for all, therefore all died in him. And as all died in Christ, all shall live in Christ. And what that means is, is that Jesus swallowed humanity into the Trinity and restored us back into this wonder, this bliss and this dance, this dance that pervades all of creation. So everything you, that in the universe is in him and included in him. Now, what I want to talk about tonight, okay, so... I hope you understood me so far. Do I have permission to just go far out? Because I feel like we have to accelerate times. The enemy isn't holding back. The culture is not holding back. Why should we hold back? So I've made it my intention. I've decided this year, no holding back for me. Now is the time to advance. Now is the time to accelerate. And it's not time to hold back. So if my words make you uncomfortable, if my words seem to push you beyond where you're supposed to be, I'm glad about that because the Lord wants you to have a new creation life. And I am here like Paul. My name is Justin Paul. I was named Paul from the Apostle Paul. My mum chose that name for me. And I have the same mandate as Paul, which is to see you full and overflowing, being fully filled with God, that you would come to the full heights of who you are in a new creation. So I will not lower my message to where we are comfortable, but I will raise you up to where you belong in the limitless life of union with God. Whew, that's good so far. Thank you, Father. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about multi-location. If you begin to engage the realm of God's presence and say, Lord, open up my love gates, open my eyes, 
he's not just going to show you things in heaven. He is going to show you things that are happening right now in the earth. He will take you to nations. He will show you what's happening with friends and family. And he will even take you through the timeline and show you future possibilities and also remembrance of things that have already happened. Now, we should not be afraid of this because all of it is under the government of Yeshua HaMashiach. He has won history with the cross. He was slain before the foundation of the world and he wants to show you the Father's business. And the Father's business is all space and time. All of it's in him. In the beginning, when he created the world, the word used is Bereshit. And Bereshit, you know, Bereshit bara Elohim is how the Bible starts. That word Beit, the letter Beit, which is the first letter, means a house, a family that we're in. We're in him. We live in him. We move in him. That's why Paul used those words in Acts to a group of people that didn't even know Jesus. He used their poetry and quoted back to them, in him you live, in him you move, in him you have your being, because we're in him. Now, when you understand that, you should not be afraid, because if you're in union with him, if you're in love with him and his spirit is in you and you are in his spirit, then anywhere he takes you will be safe. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the mature sons of God. But the spirit will not lead you beyond sometimes where you give permission because the Lord wants to, you to be powerful. And I've found this with heaven. Heaven doesn't force you to think the same. That's why we have so many doctrines, so many denominations, because it's not forced. Love is not forced. It's actually an invitation. Yay. <laughs> so I'm inviting you. And the things I want to talk about tonight are not forced. If you want to remain localized, you can. You are powerful. And the world is rich and beautiful. It's full of awe. It's full of wonder. Holding a baby, art, food is beautiful. But if inside of you there's an appetite to see more, to go further out, this is the message for you. So I'm inviting you into it. So I'm going to pray now. Father, I pray for extreme faith and grace. The way we've had grace in the past and faith in the past, I'm asking for great grace and great faith to be upon us all that we begin to go beyond where we're comfortable because there are things you want to show us and there are things you want us to experience that are beyond our wildest dreams. And this is not, not a human message, Paul said. He called the gospel not a human message. This is a beyond human message. And I've written a book about it called Beyond Human. So tonight, we're going to, today, this morning for you, is evening for me, we're going to explore quantum entanglement. We're going to explore being in multi-locational dimensions, okay? Now, in the last session, I talked about the face of the deep and the different realms that exist, but they're all at hand. So think about this. It might seem odd, but Australia is as close as your hand. Some of you live in Australia, so that's not a problem. But the other parts of the world are as close as your hand. The kingdom of heaven's at hand, and all of it is in the next breath next to you. And the Lord can move you. Now, this is what I feel the Lord wants to do in this generation. It's the pattern of Enoch. It's the pattern of Elijah. They shifted dimensions. Elijah shifted dimensions so many times that when Ahab was looking for him, they had to, he had to promise not to shift dimension. The exact same thing happened with Enoch. Enoch would phase in and out of heaven and earth constantly. In fact, he would multilocate to heaven and then multilocate in heaven. And that's happened to me. Sometimes I've gone into an ascension and then I've gone into another ascension within heaven for there are many heavens. Now, whilst this might seem strange, it is not strange for you because of the gospel. The gospel is far more scandalous, far more powerful, far wilder and crazier than anyone's been preaching it. And the reason it's been so small is we've limited the conversation. See, the conversation, your dialect determines your destiny. So as you speak things, it opens up probabilities and possibilities. And as you think things, as a man thinks in his heart or a woman thinks, so they are. In other words, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove is perfect well. So the issue is not what you are. You are already in him. In fact, this is what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, and I quote it in every message pretty much. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, I love that word, enfolded. 
If anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. Now, this has not been the way the gospel has been preached. We've not preached a new creation gospel. This is why we haven't seen new creation behavior. We've preached a gospel of you're a sinner. When you die, you'll get to heaven. You know, if you're a good boy or a good girl. But the gospel is you are a good boy. You are a good girl because he's made you with his righteousness, innocent in his sight. And it says he presents you with gladness and joy, innocent before the father. Not only... Are you born from above? You're a brand new creature. So Paul said, the archaic way is gone. Look, the new has arrived. Now, I love that verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And I want to encourage you to look at it in every translation you can and meditate on it. This is another translation. The old way of living has disappeared. A new way of living has come into existence. Another one says, it's a whole new world. So listen, This is the mystery of the gospel. Not only did you die, but your world died. And when you accepted Jesus, you accepted a new world, a world with angels, a world with saints, a world with quantum entanglement, a world with infused knowledge, a world with seven spirits, a world with wheels and eyes and sounds and frequency and vibration. And you are crazy out of your mind, like Paul said, he said, if I'm out of my mind, it's all God's fault, because I've had a realization, I've had a revelation, if anyone's in Christ, they are a new creation, and this has been my understanding, I am in him, and you are in him, and all we need to do is engage that reality, and it opens up, I'm in him, he's in me, and then it opens, and you start to learn how to separate soul and spirit, And that's what's happened for me. Gradually, I learned that I could multilocate. I learned that I could be besides myself like Paul. And sometimes when I'm preaching, it happens. I'm literally besides myself. You're here in Yahweh, engage in Yahweh. Or sometimes I'm in a conversation with people and they need wisdom. And I literally go up into the heavens and I'm there and here at the same time. And sometimes... The presence of the Lord has been so strong and I've engaged it. I've turned into it because you can all do this. And it's, it's opened up like that. And suddenly it's like I'm in multiple things at once and I can see them at once. And one time I was ministering in France and I hope you guys can handle this because I can't see your faces. Basically, I'm having to trust by faith that this is resonating with you. I was in France and I was so wanting the meeting to go well that I expanded over the, the meeting and I sat on the mountain of their ministry. I sat on the mountain of their ministry, but I remained in the room. So I was above the room, in the room, and I looked at my team and my heart went out towards them in love and I took them into the court and presented them before the Lord to ask would he mentor them more powerfully. At the same time, my spirit was moving towards the next city I was going to. And all four of these were opening me at once. And I was actually fully aware of each one. My spirit was going over the next location. We were going to teach at a courts next to the courts in a different city with a different group. And my spirit there looked like a tornado and I could feel it moving. My spirit on the mountain was governmental. My spirit in heaven was love and mentoring. And, and, all, and then my spirit was in the room inebriated. Now, if you'd seen me in that meeting, all you would have seen was me looking like I was in the prayer of silence, enjoying Jesus. But I was actually in an expanded state. And what I've learned that inside you are many mansions and many realms of existence. And the challenge in our generation is to accept what science is already showing us. Now, I could have done my whole talk tonight on quantum physics because I've been reading books on it and engaging it for a number of years now, trying to understand the dynamics of the kingdom. The reality is, whether you like it or not, you are multilocational. In fact, your body is physically phasing in and out of this dimension. And the the particles of light that are emanating from your body, which we can measure with a photometer, are entangling with the people around you. Part of you is embedding in them and part of them is embedding in you. In fact, just to give you a mystical background from Judaism, when it says in Genesis, let us make man in our image, the, the, the rabbis teach that that was all the cosmos saw us 
and said, we want a part in them. We want a stake inside them. And they put a part of themselves in us that in our revealing, they have an inheritance. In fact, that matches what our bodies are made out of, where we're made out of stardust and we're made out of the hydrogen from the Big Bang. And we also contain the DNA of the species that are on Earth. Inside your body is a record, believe it or not. I watched a series on genetics. You have the genetics in you of trees. You have the genetics of you of mushrooms, frogs. It's in you. Why is it all in you? And what is the rest of it for? It's because you are the ecclesia. You are the ones that all creation's looking to have an inheritance from. So all creation, all creation is groaning for you to be revealed. Now, if this seems too big for you, don't worry, because you will get there. I will get there. The question is, is how much of it would you like to see now? How much of a beyond human life would you like to live? Now, I feel like my quest in the, whatever years I have on this earth is I'm going to try and mentor as many people into that realm as I can. And I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to run forwards. So in my secret life with the Lord, which I'm sharing with you because it's necessary, I'm engaging these things. I'm engaging for teleportation, trans relocation, ascension, and governance over the air, governance over gravity, governance over the systems of this world, because I'm a son. And I want to learn the ways of my father, walking with angels, walking with saints, learning how to function in miracles like John G. Lake. You know, John G. Lake knew the science of miracles. He said, I could see how they happened and how to function in them. Now, there are many areas I haven't got knowledge of, but you may have. This is why we have to have the body coming together in this time. Oneness is a big thing right now in the heart of the father for the body. That is what's going to trigger a lot of these changes. Okay, so Bill Johnson says this. He says, faith actualizes what it realizes. In other words, when you think in a certain way, the world you see changes. So, for example, when you learned that prophecy was possible, you began to practice and you learned how to prophesy. Now, it may not have been smooth. You may have made mistakes. Well, it's exactly the same with these other things. They don't just come to one go. It says, through reason of use, our spiritual senses are exercised. So through reason of use, we learn these dynamics. We learn infused knowledge. We learn quantum shift technology, phasing technology, ascension technology. Wow. The key thing is, is that we have the courage to change. And I believe I'm speaking to a company people that have the courage to change. So can I hear an amen on the chat? <laughs> so come on. Yes, that's great. It's popping up on my screen, guys. So whenever you post a chat, I can see it. So keep giving me some love because I want to feel it. I want to know that I'm connecting with you guys. Now, do I have permission to push it out further still? That's what I'm looking for. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Okay, so you are a company of people who are extreme. You wouldn't be on this conference if you weren't, but we're all not extreme enough because where the Lord wants us to go is so much more radical that it's going to redefine Christianity in one generation. In fact, many of the things we teach will change. The way the church expresses itself will change. The way we do things is about to change, and you are going to be part of that change. You are going to be a person that creates change. Okay, thank you, Father. So <laughs> let's keep going. So listen to this. Your blueprint is Yeshua. If you're looking for how you should act, how you should think, and how you should feel, Yeshua, Hamashiach, or Jesus Christ is your blueprint. It says in Romans 8.29 in the mirror, we see the original and intended pattern of our lives preserved in his son. He is the firstborn from the same womb that reveals our genesis. So listen, guys, our genesis is now from Jesus, is from the womb of the Holy Spirit. You've been born of the womb of the Spirit. You've been born of, of a different realm. That's the gospel. And Jesus is the, is the one we are meant to emulate. It says this in Colossians 3, 4, the exact life in Christ is now repeated in us. We are being co-revealed. Now, this is a really important thing. Everybody says things like, I don't want them to see me. I just want them to see Jesus. You don't find that in the gospel. You find that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Paul, the God of Moses, and he wants to be co-revealed. So he takes pleasure in the merger of you and him so that you are, are revealed together. 
So what am I saying? It says that you are meant to be glorious for you're the house of his glory. And this is where I arise and shine comes from. For too long, we've been holding back because we keep saying things like, you know, there's no one like Jesus. But, you know, I love Bobby Connor. Bobby Connor was, was worshiping the Lord one day and he said, Lord, there's no one like Jesus. And the Lord's response was, yes, and isn't that a shame? So the Lord wants us to be like him or to use Paul words that we would be conformed to the image and the likeness of the son. He, you are meant to act like him, sound like him. Now, this is going to stretch you. But many of the things that we've done in the past that we think we can't do, like, for example, you know, let me say that again. In the past, we thought everything was sovereign. We thought speaking in tongues was sovereign. If you read old Pentecostal books, which I have, they thought the Holy Spirit had to come on you for you to speak in tongues. Now we tell people to engage the presence. And I've seen many people flow in in tongues. Same with prophecy. If you read the 1940s, 1950s books on prophecy, they say the spirit would come on you, then you'd stop. So if there were 10 people wanting a prophecy, but you only had a word come on you, you could only prophesy over one or five. Now, later prophetic books, later prophetic books said, you can stir up the gift within you like a river by honoring the person and moving in a heart of love for strengthening, and encouragement and comfort. Now we know that we can all prophesy. Now we know we can speak in tongues. Now, there are other things that Jesus wants us to operate in that we need to learn the science of the unseen. So for a number of years now, I've been practicing the science of multilocationality. And I believe God wants to take it up to another level. So I'll give you an example of an experience I had. I really love Seattle Christian, you know, Revival Center. I don't know if you know uh, those guys. They are a wonderful company of people. I've been there a number of times and I have a particular love for the angel there called Breaker. The angel there, Breaker, engaged me in a profound way and taught me um, about the courts of heaven and taught me about the, the laughter of heaven. He sits in heaven and laughs and judges his enemies. And Breaker told me, the angel of the church there, that the, the courtroom is formed by laughter. There is a frequency of joy that goes through here. And that as we turn into it, it becomes the source of our supply. In other words, the courtroom is right there in laughter form. And it comes from heaven. And it's the laughter of justice. So I learned this from the angel. So we're in an era where we need to learn from angels. Because throughout the Bible, angels told people things. Like Daniel, it says, I have come to make it clear to you. I have come to tell you the vision. We mustn't be afraid of all of God's house. If it comes from Yeshua, if it comes from Adonai, if Ruach HaKodesh is present, then I want to know. When I engaged Breaker, Breaker was right there, but I had to choose to turn into it. As I turned into it and honored it and slowed down, this is how you do it. It opened up and I saw this big happy face. And he actually gave me a prophetic word for SRC that came true. He said, this place is going to break out. And they, after this happened, he showed me the healing angels that work with him. They had a healing revival that went on, I think, over a year or something. Charlie Champ was involved. So the word came to pass. So one day I was at my desk back in Wales. I'm telling you all this because I love Breaker and I love Darren and I love the team. Okay. Now, love activates multi-dimensions. And I want to show you what happened. So I was in my house at my table with my computer and I was thinking about this church and I was thinking they're meeting right now. And as I thought about them and I loved, and I thought about Breaker's face and I thought about the elders there and their courage. And as I thought about all Darren does and his humor and joy, all I could say is like that, I was standing on the stage. I was standing on the stage in Seattle Revival Center, looking at the room and like that, I was back at my desk and I was like, wow, what just happened? Five minutes later, I get a text message on my phone from Darren, the senior pastor. And he says, dude, <laughs> were you just in the meeting? Um, I think it was his mother-in-law who had never seen an open vision before. Had never seen anything like it. Saw me stand on the stage. And he contacted me and he said, were you just in the meeting? And I had to say to him, yes. I, and I apologized. <laughs> I said, 
I said, Darren, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that was going to happen. I just love you guys so much. See, love will activate your higher dimensional capabilities. Love will activate you into another realm. I'll give you another example of how it works. I was in New Zealand, which is obviously the other part of the world from where I live. Whoa. And it was a break time. I was doing a, a seminars there. And I thought about Rachel, my wife, my lovely wife, and all she does with the family and all that they do. And my heart went towards her. And I saw her by faith. And I hugged her. And I felt the presence of the Lord go out from me. And I felt his love. And I felt like an energy in the room. An energy came in the room. Oh, now this is the amazing thing. I then got a text message from Rachel. Same thing again. She said, did you just come into the room? And I was like, yes, honey. I love you. I wanted to see you. And I asked her, I said, Rachel, what did it feel like? She said, it felt like the presence of Holy Spirit came in but you and him as one person. And I felt you envelop me and hug me. And I felt your love for me and Holy Spirit's love for me. And I felt the energy of it. See, these are the things the Lord wants to open up and even more. I believe these kind of things are just the beginning of where we're supposed to be. So humanity restored is multi-locational. What people don't realize is that Adam and Eve were multi-locational. This is what the Jews teach. They were, they were aware. They could see multiple dimensions and interact with multi-dimensions and their doors and gates were open. Okay, so let's come back to the pattern of Jesus. I can feel I'm phasing dimensions right now, okay? Now, why is that happening to me? Because the law of honor. Now, one of the ways you can activate this in your life is by reading about the saints and then practicing, engaging, or listening to messages like this and saying, Lord, I engage it. Now, because I'm talking about phasic dimensions, I can actually feel I'm phasic dimensions. Now, on a few occasions when this has happened to me, my body's been impacted. And as strange as it sounds, I, I once did a spirit school in Cardiff and my face changed appearance five times. And I was completely unaware that it was happening. And I know of other people in the mystic realm. I know of one person who was ministering. And, you know, I'll, I'll just share this with you. This person was engaging and people began to see multiple versions of them phasing in and out inside the, in, in, in the meeting. Now, these things are going to start to happen. They happen with all the saints of old. I could speak all day about this topic. I've studied this topic for 10 years. I'm not speaking to someone pulling on straws. I could talk about Joseph of Cupertino and all these different people, Catherine Siena, Padre Pio, and I could share multi-locational stories, Cuthbert, um, David, Kieran, Patrick. This is Christianity. Christianity is this, that you are non-local. You are not the local church. Even the fact we've called it the local church has diminished what it is because we can never be local because we have come to Mount Zion and we are non-local, trans-dimensional gates and doors. Okay, so this is a challenging thing. Bill Johnson said this. He said the pattern of, that we should emulate is Jesus after the resurrection, not before. You think of how glorious Jesus was up to the cross but John says in his book that as he is now, as he is, so are you in this world. In other words, Jesus after the cross is the one we're looking to emulate. And what did he do? He kept phasing for 40 days in and out, phasing dimensions, changing appearance, moving around the earth. Well, so it says in Luke 24, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace to you. Shalom. Shalom to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they'd seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your heart? This is the issue. We cannot be troubled by that realm. Don't let fear come out of your gates. Now, I've had to take fear into the courts and, and divorce from it, divorce from fear of death. You also have to divorce from unbelief. Because the structure of unbelief is the antichrist spirit that knocks against you functioning in the Christ anointing in Yeshua. Way, thank you. Someone's Tracy's getting whacked listening to this. I'm, I'm pleased because 
the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we need to be intoxicated on his goodness because what I'm actually bringing you today is good news. Now, many churches would throw me out for even teaching this. This is how far we've removed from authentic Christianity. And the Lord is judging that system. That system will not continue. And even in the COVID season, he scattered them to homes because they have not aligned with the blueprint of authentic being co-revealed in Christ. And we can't go back. People will try and bring it back. But God is saying, move forwards with joy and courage. It takes courage to move forwards. And I'm believing even by my words, they're giving you courage. I'm believing my words contain a frequency, a boldness for you to go forward and realize you are made for a limitless life. In Christ, there is no ceiling. In Christ, there is the sky is not the limit. You are made to go above the skies. <laughs> okay, so Jesus kept phasing dimensions. It says in Acts 1 3 that after the sufferings on the cross, Jesus appeared alive many times. In fact, over a 40 day period, he kept phasing in and out. Now, I think this is an important scripture because 40 represents a generation. And I believe it's a prophetic word to grab on now that we would be the generation who phased dimensions like Enoch. I am so confident in this word. I am confident because I've met Enoch and I've been in those realms. And I know that Enoch is a pattern for now, an ascension person that walked with Yahweh, walked with God, engaged realms and walked with angels and saw different dimensions and became immortal. Immortality comes by phasing your body out of the realm of death and into the realm of life. And there has to be a company that learn we are made for life. Satan comes to kill, steal and destroy. John 10.10. 10. And Jesus came that you might have life and life in abundance. Zoe life, the life that God has, that you might enjoy it. And then it says life in abundance, perisos, that word there means a life beyond all requirements and superfluous, a life that overflows. So the church or the ecclesia are meant to be the place where life flourishes. Now we know it's been the place where death flourishes because people bury their dead around churches, especially in Britain. That's because we've honored death, but there's a new dialogue coming. We, our new dialogue is determine our destiny. What we decree is being established. Yes, which is we are of life. Or as, you know, I love Larry Randolph. He says, we're of the womb, not the tomb. And it's out of the womb of the morning, your youth come like dew. The womb of the morning is a realm. It's an actual dimension for you to engage in Holy Spirit. Okay, right. I've probably got 10 minutes left, so I'm just going to keep going. So Daniel saw this timeline. He actually saw this timeline and he prophesied into our day. Now I've seen the open book. Paul Keith teaches on the open book and I honor that. And I know it's open because one day the Lord took me there. The Lord took me and showed me. And the funny thing was, it was a parabolic vision. It was a dream. In this dream, Jesus took me into a bank vault and the gate was open and the vault was open and there was a book on the table. And this small book was the book of truth and the truth will set you free. We've been under lies for too long, but I'm telling you now, my words are truth and my words are life. We are in the era where the truth will set us free, set us free from religion, set us free from the timeline, set us free from being bound in locality because you are cosmic. You are cosmic. You are cosmic. Listen to this. All creation's groaning for the revealing of the sons of God. That means you have a capacity within you to go wherever creation is. And creation is massive. That means the church in our days, if we are to fulfill the mandate, has to learn what we really are. We are the government and body of Christ. We are the magistrates and kings of Yahweh. And we are the priests on behalf of yod heh vav -Heh, into creation who cause the realignment back to life, back to the blueprint of joy, shalom, goodness, and love. Okay, so Daniel saw this thing, he said, many will travel everywhere, Daniel 12, verse 4, many, I love this, whenever you look at the new covenant, it always uses the word many, many will, shall say, come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, many will prophesy, you can all prophesy, I love the word all, study the word all in scripture, because all his promises are yes and amen. And he's calling you into it. 
He's calling you into a life that's not ordinary. Listen, guys, this realm opens up by refusing to be ordinary. I refuse it. I refuse nominal mediocrity because I know, I know the gospel has gripped me and it's done something in me and I'm out of my mind and it's God's fault. And I tell you what, I want to be more out of my mind than I ever have been before because my mind is too small. My mind is too small. Your mind's too small. I remember one day I was engaging Yahweh and I reached the edge of my mind. And I thought, what do I do? My mind's so small. And I popped out of it and went into his mind. And that's when he started teaching me about governing time and governing space and governing creation. When I realized this is too small. And I was in a gathering in Scotland with Ian Clayton. And we were doing worship and I got so expanded. I was so engaged with God. I began running around the room and I was shouting at the top of my voice. And I didn't understand it at the time. I was saying, this house is too small. This house is too small. This house is too small. And what happened was the room felt too small for my spirit. My spirit filled that room. My spirit filled that room and my body felt too small. Whoa. So you are massive. You are much bigger than you'll ever know. So it's, it, it's perfectly time to end the message. In my time, this is the right time to end. And I think I'll end it there, even though we're only on page two, because I think I've given you enough. Now, what I want to do, even though I didn't finish it and I didn't tell you all about it, I'm going to activate it in you now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to teach you, we're going to do an activation right now on multi-locationality. Okay. Now, this is what I want you to know is that the, the protocol for activating these things in you is union with God's presence. And we're, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to get into the breath. And then what you do is you go up into the light or into his presence or into the garden, wherever the Holy Spirit leads. Now, there's something about going up that opens up to and fro. So in scripture, it says up and down, to and fro. What I've learned is the more you ascend, the more you transcend. So ascension is the technology that unravels your DNA from being anchored to the temporal. I'll, I'll put it another way. The more you engage above, the less below can hold you until you start to look different. You don't even look like you've got a nation on the earth. I can tell really strong mystics because when I look at them, I can't tell their nationhood because they've broken from the tethering to the house of their genetics and the name and the identity that they've given. Because your identity is now that you are born from above. That is where you're from and you act like above and, and well, function from above. So we're gonna do the protocol now and I'm gonna take you through it. Now, first of all, let go of fear because I believe this word has been given by the Lord for today. And I believe there's grace on it and Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh is with us. He's in you and with you and he will never leave you. We're going to turn into his presence because he wants to mentor you. Now, there's one thing the Lord spoke to me many years ago when I was learning how to multilocate. He said this, you can always go home. In the natural, you can always go home. In the spirit, you can always go home and he is your home. So you can always go into him. You can always go into the light. You can always go to Zion. So this is the steps. Step one is we return to the breath. John was in the breath on the Lord's day, the Ruach HaKodesh. He was caught up in the breath. Now, almost every religion practices engage in the breath. Different religions have different names, but what they're doing is they're catching on to an idea that's from Yahweh, that we breathe his air. When we breathe in, we breathe in Aleph and He, the silent names of God, which mean breath. He means breath. And when you engage He, you engage Yod, He, Bav, He. And there is energy in it. Now, Buddhists would call it chi, but we know what it is. It's actually the Lord. It's the Lord himself, the Lord of, of life. And as we breathe him in, this is the air I breathe. You know the song, your holy presence living in me. And as we breathe in his breath, a thing happens to you where you will begin to go into a gentle absorption, which opens you up. Okay. So, then we're going to center by saying words that tune your mind into where your spirit's going. We're going to say, I'm in you and you're in me. That's my own prayer. You can make up your, another one if you want. Okay. 
That's just my centering prayer that I've used for the last decade. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do what Bob Jones talked about, which is just lift your hands and go up into the light. Now, Bob Jones would activate this in many people. And he said it was simple and easy. And I believe it's simple too. Now, listen, the way heaven works is like a child. When you become like a child, it opens. Like we might think, how can I teleport my body? How can I be in four places at once? It starts through that tiny gate of love and going in gently. Now, I've often found that a lot of the mystic realm starts off so gently. So today, if you only feel a tiny gentleness, honor it. Small keys open big doors. Okay. Finally, when we go into the light, we're going to expand our senses and we're just going to open up like that. You're going to open up and what you'll do is you'll feel the saints and angels. Don't be afraid of that. Just let it happen. You'll feel Yahweh. You'll feel Abraham. Usually Abraham is very interested in all of us. You will feel Enoch. <laughs> you'll feel all sorts of things and just enjoy it. See, a lot of it functions through love and joy, not through effort and striving. Effort and striving are the opposite. Remember, we, we function in the unforced rhythms of grace. We function from the rhythm of the honey, like the song earlier. We're in the honey love. And then what we're going to do is we're going to gently come back down. Now, at that point, we need to center back in the room. Otherwise, you will still be like all over the place. That's okay. We'll ground back into the room. Now, when you go up, you can also go across the earth and to different nations, but we're not going to do that in this activation. We're just going to do a simple activation to begin to untether you from the earth and from the timeline and from the restrictions. Okay. So here we go. Um, I'm concentrating very hard because I'm so in the spirit right now um, that I'm having to really focus on talking. That's okay. I give you permission, right? As we do this, if you go into a ligature, remember at the start, I talked about a ligature where, where you can't talk, that's okay. And if it carries on for the rest of the day, that's okay. Remember, we're being led by the spirit and no more guilt, no more condemnation. If you have an ecstasy, that's okay. If you cry, that's okay. If you laugh, that's okay. Be free, be you. Let's not hide anymore. Whoa. Thank you, Father. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to teach you a breath activation. So what I want you to do is your thoughts may interfere, but I want you to let them go and not judge them. Don't judge them. Just let them be a river over there that you're not in that river. Any thought that comes as we do this, if you think about anyone else or anything, let it go and don't judge yourself. If you judge yourself, you just get distracted. So all the mystics teach on this. Don't ever punish yourself. You are not under punishment. Okay, so we're going to practice the breath, okay? So what I want you to do is focus completely on your breath.
we begin to live a limitless life where you show us the things you want to show us in earth and in the heavens and that we, would you teach us to be multi-locational beings who live a kainos new creation life like Yeshua we want to be like him move like him act like him and do the works that he prepared for us oh oh thank you lord some of you might see the books of destiny there i'm seeing some of them right now i'm seeing isaiah's scroll because it's so key to this hour you may see something else just keep engaging and if you get distracted return to the breath the breath is an anchor the breath is always there the breath is holy spirit thank you lord oh now guys when you're in this realm i just felt an invitation to go up even higher to to the heavens above that because there are many heavens and this is how it works you just follow holy spirit it's those who are led by the sons are led by the spirit are the sons okay the mature sons okay now i want you guys to just slowly come back to your body just come out that round thank you papa thank you holy spirit thank you jesus thank you lord for your angels that are around as you might see your angels as you're coming out of the realm as i'm pulling out of heaven i'm pulling a whole bunch of angels with me because they're connected to my destiny scroll but you are too okay coming back into this room coming back into the, my feeling my feet on the floor begin to feel your feet on the floor and come back to the breath just breathe thank you lord lord i thank you that you're opening up these realms i'm grateful and we together treasure these moments this is a wonderful moment this is a beautiful moment and thank you it's the beginning of a whole new world amen i'm going to land it there guys i had a lot more to say but i felt like an impartation had happened now you may have more questions that's good question shows your consciousness is expanding questions show that you're journeying and to journey is to question i haven't come to give you all the answers but i've come to take you into the realm where you can have those answers because you have a direct line to yeshua holy spirit and adonai and you are a son in the house of glory and you are allowed to go there as often as you want i want to encourage you to practice what i just taught you go back to the breath do ascension because what i found was as i ascended something opened up here as well somehow the the protocol of going up changed it here and then i became more aware more cardiognosis i could feel the angels more so ascension is the technology of transfiguration and we know this from yeshua he went up on the mountain and was transfigured there's something about going up to where you're from that will transfigure your life and change it forever and he is going to do things with you that are beyond your wildest dreams so thanks for listening guys i honor you all thank you Thank you.